my gorgeous, beautiful, wonderful queen bees. It is your girl Amanda, the buzzed artist. Welcome back to my channel, a place where you can let loose and just have fun with your acrylic paint people. So for this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a very magical galaxy sky with a reindeer, we'll call him Blitzen, and some beautiful fir trees, all bespeckled with some Christmas magic. So grab your brushes and come meet me. I'm going to show you exactly how to make this. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, my queen bees, so we're going to be starting with our night sky. This is gonna be the most fun part of this painting because we just get to play with all sorts of different colors. So, what we're going to do first is we're going to grab our three quarter inch flat wash brush, dip it in some water, get it nice and wet, and what we're going to do is we're going to start out with some blue. Just like that. And I'm gonna add a little bit of black, just a little. I don't want too much black, but I do want to get a nice darker blue going on here. Okay, and once I have that, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to start making sideways strokes onto my canvas. Just like that. Alright, um, you've probably seen me do galaxy skies in the past. I've done one with my brother Anthony about a year ago at this point where we made uh, Christmas trees that were kind of in the background or with a galaxy sky in the background and those came out super super duper cool. And I also did a galaxy, a galaxy, blah, I can't say galaxy. I also did like a, um, what was it, isopropyl alcohol uh, to make a, to help make a galaxy sky which was also a fun little experiment. And uh, you can check out those videos on my channel. We had, we had a good time with those. So this is kind of the same concept. We're making a galaxy sky that is just, it's teeming with all sorts of different colors. So of course, when it comes to the first coat of, of our paint here, it's not really gonna look like much until you start putting in your, your second, your third and fourth layers, right? And we're gonna work kind of fast because the way to get those really nice looking galaxy skies is with a wet um, canvas, aka a wet set of paint, right? So just going back and forth, going and adding in my color. Okay. I'm always super excited to do galaxy skies. They're, they're just so, they're so much fun and you're gonna love them too. Now I left a little bit of space right over here that I did not cover it in the blue. That's because we're gonna go in with our red. So without even rinsing my brush really, I'm just gonna go over to my red over here and I'm going to take some white out of there as well. I'm just gonna take a little bit more. And I'm not rinsing my brush because you're gonna be getting a lot of those blends in the sky anyways, so might as well take advantage of it. Okay, so we're gonna go back to our canvas here. And we're gonna lay down our paint. I'm kind of starting in the part where we did not apply the blue at first. And then as I'm, I'm slowly adding water as I'm adding that red past the border where we uh, started placing our red and it's going straight up into the blue as well. And what's gonna start to happen is a color blend. You're gonna start to see the sky is gonna turn this, this like purple color where the red crosses with the blue. And if you remember in elementary school, we learned that when you put red and blue together, it makes purple. <laughs> so this is merely just making those colors work for us. So don't worry if this looks a little weird. Um, if you feel like your colors are getting muddy, this is actually a whole part of the process. You're just starting to add color and starting to play a little bit here. Okay. And of course we want to leave this bottom part here nice and white because we're going to be adding in our snow eventually. But for right now, I want to leave that just white so we don't have to do that much work afterwards. See, art's all about planning, right? <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna go ahead now and take some blue and add some white to that. So I'm just gonna try to scoop it up from underneath. All right, so I got a nice light blue. And we're gonna add this on top right here. Now this is where we start to do our layering, all right? So I'm just taking my brush now 
and I'm working with the layers that I just previously placed. Now you'll start to see there's nice blends happening already. So you can already see that the red is starting to blend very nicely. I'm going a little bit into the red space with my brush. And again, I'm always keeping that sideways angle so that I make it look like my sky has some sort of movement, right? It kind of looks like it's moving up this in this direction. So it's kind of like, I don't know, when it comes to art for me, I know it's sort of like an optical illusion at times. You need to, if you want to convey movement, sometimes you, you have to kind of play with lines and kind of um, just to give that message, you need to show something is moving. You do that by lines and directions that lines are going. So now I'm always kind of going, I'm going back to just straight blue now. I'm working on the corners here. So right, I'm working with a uh, canvas paper. I have it taped to my, to my uh, table right now. So this is just my way of use, utilizing a very thin form of canvas paper without having to go ahead and buy, you know, a ton of canvas that takes up room, right? I've really started falling in love with canvas paper because it just saves so much space. And also, it's a really great way to just have a little bit of fun, right? So I'm really just taking that blue and going to all the corners of my canvas here. You'll notice that... Um, I always notice at least when it comes to a painting, when you're framing a painting, usually there's like a vignette, which, vignette, vignette? <laughs> I'm so sorry, don't come at me people who are pronunciation Nazis, I'm so sorry. Um, but usually around the corners creates this vignette, this uh, darker, um, I guess, shade all around. And that helps really create this this majesty, this centering. So what by me um, putting in the darker, uh, paints on the edges here, I'm pulling everything towards the center for the, the focal point, right? So again, that's the trick of the light. It's, it's, it's one of the artist tricks to get you, the viewer, to look in the center here. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse my brush now. Okay, now it looks like Gatorade. <laughs> Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I want to go ahead and, and just add in a little bit more of a pink. So I'm just gonna add in some of my red here. Um, and I really want to get a pink color going. So I'm really pulling in a lot of white, okay? So my brush still is holding on to a little bit of blue, which is okay because, again, um, this is going to all combine together anyways. But this is going to be something I'm going to place on top. So I'm just going to go ahead, you know what, I'm going to add a little bit more red to that. There we go. And I just go ahead and add on top of that. And as you guessed it, I'm blending. So I'm taking the color, I'm pulling it out. Just like so. It doesn't stay in one place because, well, that's not really a gradient, right? A gradient blends into another color. So. I'm just taking that and applying layer by layer on top, just like so, okay? And once again, you know, once I'm pretty happy with that, I'm gonna go back in with the blue and just finish off my blend, and I think we'll be pretty much set with our galaxy sky. And you're probably thinking, that's it? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> There's nothing to it when it comes to a galaxy sky, it's really just um, playing with blends, right? So, I, every now and then I dip back into my water just to help my paint carry a little bit more so I can thin it out in some areas, not make it clump up so much. I'm not using that much water either, just a little. Okay, and again, just to reiterate, a galaxy sky is all about layering. So it's gonna require at least three to four uh, layers of paint in order for you to get that look you're really going for. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of white in the center here. Um, I do want to emphasize at least there's a, a lighter focal point here. Okay. Okay. So next, I'm gonna give my brush another rinse. We're gonna go back to the blue. And uh, I'm going to add a little bit of white to the blue. 
because I don't want to completely lose all the lighter blue that's in here. And I'm very lightly just adding those layers on top, I'm just kind of meeting where I left off with the with the pink and just blending it with the blue, okay? And again, I'm just using that, that sideways pattern, as always, to help me carry that paint out. Just a little bit of water to help me grab that. Okay, we're almost done. So I'm gonna grab just straight up blue now and I'm gonna go to the edges. Just like so. And again, just carrying the rest of my paint, meeting it up with the light blue that we laid prior. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna create this gorgeous, gorgeous blend, ugh. So as you can see, this is what, like our fourth layer of paint that we laid down to actually get this look going. That's really all you need. Okay, so when, when you're out there freaking out that, you know, something's not going according to plan with your paints, layer, 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 okay? Sometimes your paint needs just a couple of layers to go in and, and get it to be what, it, what you're really looking for. And I'm just going to go add in a little bit more black into the, into the blue here. And I'm just going to finish off the, the, the extreme edges as well. Again, to help pull the eye in. I don't want to do too much, just, just a little bit, to show that it's there. Okay, so I think I'm happy with this. This looks good. I think this is going to achieve the look we're trying to go for. Next is the really fun part. So we're gonna give our brushes a nice rinse. So we're gonna clean our brushes really well and we're gonna go ahead now and add in our snowflakes. So when it comes to snowflakes, they're sporadic, they're wild. Now, um, in my past videos, I have shown um, making snowflakes using a brush. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. So we're gonna just take some white. You're gonna dip it in some water. Because I really wanna get it nice and wet. Coating both sides of my brush. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your brush, hand, hold it over your painting, and then with the bristles, you're gonna pass your finger over and let the paint splatter. Okay? So what's this, what this is gonna do is create a multitude of snowflakes. And I'm just not talking about like two or three, I'm talking like every single color. And, uh, not, excuse me, not every single color, but every sort of shape, right? Stars are numerous in quantity and also they come in various different shapes, right? So doing the, the brush flicking really helps you get those multi um, sizes. <laughs> Why can't I speak English today? I apologize, everybody. And if I want to concentrate some of the snow in certain areas, I just go over closer to that area and keep flicking on my brush. Okay. Oh, gorgeousness. I love that. So, I'm just gonna keep on doing that. Yeah, I'm a really, I'm a really big fan of doing the snow method here. It's extremely forgiving. Let me just put that out there. <laughs> um, I, I always notice that you know when making a galaxy sky, you know it can, it can be a little intimidating because it's like, oh god, how am I gonna make this look like a snowy scene, or how am I gonna make this look anywhere close to convincing? Um, I'm telling you, your, the snow or the white specks, they save your life. They really transform your painting, right? I mean, it already looks 12 times more, you know, more fantastic. So, uh, once you're kind of good with your star, or with your, I keep calling them stars, but when you're good with your snowflakes, um, we're just gonna add more, a little bit more bigger, a little bit bigger snowflakes, so. Uh, a trick I like to do is I tip, I tip over my paintbrush over to the uh, wooden side. I dip it in some white and then I just add my flakes, just like so. 
It's like that. Okay. And you can use uh, different size tips of your brush. You know, you don't have to use the, the wooden portion of your biggest brush. You can use a smaller brush. Really up to you. Okay. So, I think I am good for now. Okay, awesome. Okay. I think I'm happy with that for now. I'm just going to give the wooden tip a nice little, nice little cleanse. Alright, so what I'm going to do next is wait for this part to dry. Then we're going to go back in and add in our details, like our trees and our reindeer. So we're going to be ready in three, two, one. Boom! We're back. <laughs> okay, so our canvas is nicely dried. And what we're going to do next is work on our snow. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our three quarter inch, excuse me, this is not a three quarter inch, this is a number 10 filbert brush. We're going to dip it in some water and we're going to dip in some white. And then all we're going to do is we're just going to go to the edge here where our, uh, our galaxy sky kind of bends. We're going to go ahead and add in our white. Okay. And you can make your snow fall kind of like going down a little bit too. And then kind of moving up. And I'm, I'm really using the um, side of my brush here. So I'm constantly just moving the paint with the side of the brush. And then move it all the way down. It's like so. Righty. Oh. Ugh. Honestly, people always ask me, you know, the galaxy sky must take you the longest to do. Honestly, it's one of the easiest things you can possibly make because, I mean, you'll just, I don't know what the time check is, but I think in less than 10 minutes we're able to achieve this sky. So, I think I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with that for sure. <laughs> okay. So, once you got a nice, nice looking ground, which I think I'm pretty happy with for the most part, we're gonna rinse off our brush, and then we're going to start making trees. So, what well, to make our trees? We're gonna switch over to our number ten shader. We're gonna dip it in some water, and we're gonna go into some white here. Just dip it in some water to get it nice and wet, so it's good for, for rolling. And we're going to move over to the left portion of our, of our canvas here. And what we're going to start with, I'm going to take the, the uh, tip of my brush, lay it down flat, and just make a line. Go on straight down, just like that. All right, just like that. And then, to make our, our fir trees, the actual fir part of it, I'm gonna start on the top right here, like in the middle of, the, of uh, where we placed our line. And using the tip of my brush, I'm just going to, just gonna make lines going up, okay? I don't want to do too much, just a little, and it kind of thins out when it gets to the top here, okay? So they're, they're pretty much like horizontal lines that get bigger and bigger as they come down. Okay? I'm pretty happy with that, actually. And we'll just repeat the process again uh, with our next tree, right? So I'm just going to move over a couple inches to the, to the left, or to the right, rather. And then I'm just going to use the tip of my brush, make a straight line going down. Just like so. And you know what? I'm going to make this a little taller. Okay? And same dealio. This is one this one's going to start a little higher up. So it kind of starts out big. And then it gets smaller and smaller as it goes up. Okay? So, usually I like to turn the brush on the side when it gets to the top. Then as it starts to go down, it's when I like to turn it to the side, just like that. 
See? Nothing crazy, right? I'm not trying to do anything extremely fancy. Alright, I'm just using, just using my brush. Using the tips to my advantage. Nothing to it. How cute is that, right? Okay. And I'm just going to repeat the process um, for as many trees as I want to put in this, right? It's This is totally up to you how many trees you want to put in this. So let's do... Maybe I'll just extend this up a little bit higher. Same with this guy. Yeah, I like to, like to add a little bit more detail as we go. Okay. Ah, oh, beautiful. All right, anyway, so we're going to just go ahead and add more. Ah, oh, I love painting trees. Um, but I know some of you get a little scared when it comes to painting trees. And all I gotta say is, why you gotta be like that, man? It is pretty fun to paint a tree once you kind of get the hang of it, right? Really, you got, you got the center part of the tree, which is your trunk. And then, uh... You just add you just add some fur, <laughs> aka its its leaves, and then you're pretty much good to go, right? I mean, there's nothing really to be afraid of when it comes to trees. They ain't gonna hurt you. Trees are awesome. They really can add a lot to a painting. Okay. Oh my goodness, aren't these adorable? I'm freaking loving these trees. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. And let's do, let's see, maybe you just want to go a little lower, whatever aesthetically would make sense. Yeah, okay. And we're going to go ahead now and add in our third or fourth tree. So I'm going to put that right over here. It's going to be the lowest one. Maybe put a little bit more water in my brush for this part. And away we go. Boom. Okay. Love it. Okay. So, yeah, we're getting the hang of it. We are getting the hang of it. Alright, so Christmas report. I am almost done. <laughs> almost done getting presents for people. I don't know what it is, but there is, like, this rush of, like, panic <laughs> when December comes around. Because for me, it's like, oh, crap. I gotta I have to get gifts. This is, this is crazy. And then I start realizing, like, wow, I'm really wrapping myself up into the whole commercialism of Christmas, aren't I, you know? I um, often forget the reason for the season, right? Um, so I actually picked up from church, I picked up an Advent, like, prayer book. And it's like a six-minute-a-day kind of, like, prayer devotional. So every day for six minutes, you just, like, read a little passage. And um, I don't know, I found that helped me so much because it just kept... It just kept me um, from, you know, worrying about all the, the, the silliness of having to get the right present, and it's got to be perfect, and blah, 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 and just really thinking about, you know, what's really important. We feel like, you know what, there's more to life than just getting presents. There's more to it than just that, you know, the commercialism, the buying, and the, the ads, and the all that stuff. You know, there's, there's way more to it than that, you know, so uh, it was kind of a nice little wake-up call for me for sure so have you guys been doing that are you guys doing anything special um, to help keep you sane for Christmas um, I know you know people have different traditions about what they do to keep the Christmas spirit alive um, not hindered by shopping or, or some people actually do like the shopping part it, it helps calm them down um, comment below let me know I'm always interested to hear um, that you guys kind of cope with the season and get really into the mood and into the, you know, family and love part of the holiday. I'm falling into this little trap here where I kind of want to do more with the trees, but I feel like if I do, it's going to be, it's going to be like too much. So, hang tight, I'm currently thinking. <laughs> Now, I'm trying to think of what my favorite Christmas tradition is. There's there's so many now, and, um, you know, now that I'm married, uh, I share the holiday with my husband, Ethan's family, too. And they have their own traditions, and I think it's just so cool to see, you know, to start adopting different traditions, you know, for different places you go. For my family, you know, so we're Italian. 
I don't know if you heard that before from my channel. I feel like I mention it all the time, but in our family, um, we do the Feast of the Seven Fishes, which is always done on Christmas Eve, and we have seven different types of fishes that we eat. And my grandmother is usually the one that prepares it. Um, she's an expert, expert cook. And the funny part is, she cooks a mean fish sauce, pasta fish sauce, but she doesn't eat fish. In fact, it's not an allergy thing, she just doesn't like it. it but I've never tasted a fish sauce quite like hers, right? So we do that and we usually will play games. Um, we'll either play Italian games like Scova because my grandmother is a my grandmother is a mean card playing machine. Um, she always plays with her sisters and they always have a rip roaring good time, aka yelling at each other for cheating. And uh, it's hilarious because my grandmother does try to be sneaky and try to cheat during our games. She claims she doesn't, but she totally does. I I can smell it. <laughs> okay. So I think we're happy with the trees here. What we're gonna do next is add in our little reindeer. So I have a little stencil here of a reindeer we're gonna be putting onto the scene here. You can download the stencil and you can find the link in the description below, so be sure to check that out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a charcoal pen and I'm going to just draw the charcoal over the outline of our reindeer. So, does anybody have a favorite reindeer? <laughs> I know we talk about Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer all the time, but whatever happened to the others, right? You have da Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Cupid, Donner, and Blitzen. You know, whatever happened to those guys? Anybody, anybody have a, a preference for them? <laughs> I know in like the Santa Claus, what was it, Comet was the one that everybody loved. And then, I guess I never understood that, like why, why Comet? Is it, is that the first thing that ever comes up? on Dasher, on Dancer, on Prancer, on Vixen, on Comet. Oh, uh, well, I guess, yeah, because it's a C. So he probably comes first in the line. That's why everybody just gives him the glory of being the best reindeer ever. What about, like, Blitzen? No one ever talks about him. He's got, like, the coolest name, right? These are the things that run through my mind. Oh, goodness. Yeah, I made these little horn tendrils for for our reindeer here. You know what? This one's gonna be Blitzen. I've decided. I've decided we're gonna name this reindeer Blitzen because Blitzen doesn't get a lot of love, and I <laughs> I feel like being super generous today with our reindeer. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our reindeer, we're gonna place them where we see fit. I'm thinking like right around here somewhere is good. And then, we'll just trace over. Yeah, these, these little tendril antlers are going to be an interesting project for sure. It's going to take a bit of a steady hand, so I would highly advise you really take your time when uh, it comes to the painting portion of this, because, whew, these antlers are going to be a little bit of a doozy. So I'm just going to put that warning out for you right now. It's going to take a little bit of precision, but it's not impossible. Please work, please work. Oh, thank God. All right. <laughs> I really thought we were goners for a second there. Oh, beautiful. Okay. So we're going to switch over. And uh, I'm going to use my number one flat brush. Okay. So this is the newest set of brushes that I've previously gotten. And we're just gonna dip into some white and we're gonna just start painting in our reindeer. Blitzen. <laughs> Cause Blitzen doesn't get much love, am I right? What was the name of the dad in um, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the claymation version? Was it Comet? Is that why he gets all the fame and glory? Because he was in the, in the, Frank in the Rankin Bass version. And that's why he gets all the recognition. Man, talk about a tough break for Blitzen. So I woke up this morning and for some reason I just had the biggest, I guess, craving of watching Home Alone 2. Um, I, don't ask me why, don't ask me how, I just woke up when, I just woke up today and was like, 
you know what? I need some Tim Curry in my life. I need to watch him be a very overenthusiastic hotel manager, <laughs> sneaking into rooms and watching all that hilarity unfold. So maybe after this painting, once I'm done editing it, I'll probably go pop that onto the television. I was also interested in watching The Grinch for some, like, sometimes you just wake up and you're like, I want to do this today. Like, it just kind of, it just kind of rings so strong in your mind. You have to do it. Otherwise, your life's purpose is in question. <laughs> That's me. I will never grow up. Okay. And, um... I wanted to also talk about something that I I recently was talking to a very good friend of mine that I made on this channel. And she probably is going to know who she is when I'm painting this, so um, she reached out to me on, by email and she was telling me how she had been kind of absent from social media for a while because... Um, she got a really bad reaction from one of her paintings by a family member. And it broke my heart because she was saying how, you know, it, that, that pain of being ridiculed by a family member over her art piece really set her back. And my heart just went out to her. And I guess she, she was telling me that, you know, this whole experience set her back. She she looked at her artwork as subpar because of this whole experience that how can I even expect to sell my art when people don't, you know, when I'm being laughed at for it. And, you know, I, I felt so bad and, you know, it brought tears to my eyes listening to her or reading her story. And I, I wanted to share that here because I know that, you know, she is, she can't be the only one that has felt this way or that has experienced these things. You know, comment below if, if you've ever felt like you were subpar as an artist, that you didn't deserve to be one. And my response is, we can't base our art off of what other people think. Because honestly, when you are painting, you are painting something that's from you onto a canvas. You have so much emotion, so much vision that goes into your art. And so when that is ridiculed, man, it, it, it's like you're taking your soul, putting it on the table and asking someone to stab it, right? <laughs> at, at least if you're, if you're open to having it put on the table and stabbed at, <laughs> I guess. Um, and my advice to anybody that's, you know, kind of teeter-tottering be between the lines of should I do it, should I not do it, should I sell my art, am I even good enough? If you were to die tomorrow, would you be happy with how your life is? Would you be happy with, you know, using your talents? If your answer is yes, then, you know, you have your answer. But if your answer is no, that you still feel that there's something missing in your life, that you could have done more, then that's a big, big indication that you really, really need to pursue your passion. Um, you know, come hell or high water. You know, we want we want our legacy to live on, right? We and that's a that's a genuine human um, response. Is we want to we want to have something on this earth that we have placed here, and we want to have some sort of impact, so we will never be forgotten. And my question is. You know what to what extent do you want that impact you know do you do you want your artwork to be out there to be shared do you want it to be um held in other people's homes and and loved for centuries or for decades you know um does that make you happy to hear that somebody out there has one of your paintings and is currently hanging up on the wall and if the answer is yes then you know, what are you waiting for? Start painting, start creating, start making your art available because, you know, I really do believe we have a God-given talent and it's such a shame to limit yourself and to, and to limit other people from accessing your art, from being touched by your paintings. Because that's really what painting is. It's depending on the person, it touches them in different ways, right? So 
for one person, the person that, you know, laughs at your painting, they don't, they don't get it. You know, they don't understand, it doesn't resonate with them. Then that's their loss, you know? You gotta find someone that really does care about it. And I'm telling you, there's billions and billions of people in this world. You're bound to find at least a million of them that will respond positively to what you have to say on your canvas. So that's my two cents right there. <laughs> um, you know, we shouldn't let what others feel judge our actions because if it really is is burdening, if it really is, you know, the barrier to happiness, then, you know, the answer is simple. Do what makes you happy, you know, F everybody else <laughs> because everyone's going to say something bad no matter what. So that's Amanda's two cents right there. I'm like so scared about these antlers here. I'm kind of using the tip of my of my flat brush here, but I'm thinking I might need to switch over to my my detail round brush soon. Yeah, you know what? Let's. I'm gonna switch over to my detail round brush. Dun -da -dun, da -da 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 -dun -da -dun. Okay, <laughs> got you got that brush here. Dip it in some water. Again, I always like to make sure I have a nice wet brush so I can get those really really nice lines going. Okay, and I'm liking what I'm seeing. Hooray! <laughs> All right. Yeah, so I guess comment below has has anybody experienced something similar to you know what this what this person that I was just describing went through, and how did you overcome that? Please share below. I really want to hear, you know, I want to hear more stories. I want there to be more people that come out about this that talk about it, right? And I want to say this too, right? You know, um, being part of a lot of Facebook groups with in terms of art communities, it's very easy for people to get very snooty about their artwork, right? It's very easy for people to, you know, come in there and say, that's not art, this is art. Um, and I personally have a problem with that because really art is conveying a story of some sort. It's not up to somebody else to tell you whether your story is right or wrong. It's your story. It's your way of expressing yourself. Unless, of course, you're asking for help and assistance, then yeah, you know, go for it. But, you know, a lot of people who are artists are trying to convey some sort of message, you know, when, when they're getting to that point in their artwork. And it's really not up to somebody else to say that, you know what, nah, that message is wrong. Because it's it's not. Perhaps, you know, uh, there there is a question on form. Maybe, you know, um, if you're looking for a different type of color to, uh, to really access that, that emotion you're trying to convey here. I can understand that. But to tell somebody that their vision is wrong, that you didn't capture something, um, and it looks awful, that I think is completely unacceptable. Um, not to say that I, you know, I haven't seen art that is... It's, I don't want to say it's bad art either, it's just art that I don't, that doesn't resonate with me, but I know it resonates with somebody, right? It does. And you know what, there's even a museum out there called the Museum of Bad Art. <laughs> and, um, you know, I was actually quite surprised with some of the pieces they had in there. They were claiming that it's bad art, but, you know, yet I've seen art pieces that looked <laughs> way worse, you know, in their standards, way worse than that in actual museums. So... It, it's kind of like it asks that question of, well, is it is it priceless because the person, the artist died? Is that what makes you know a piece of art like a viable one for museums to carry? You know what really makes a piece of art um, a, a viable one to people, right? And that's a very tough question to answer, or if there even is an answer to that question. And I don't even think it's an easy one to answer. So I don't know. I'm kind of I'm torn about the whole that whole argument. What, you know, is, is art bad? Is art good? It, depending on, it depends on who you're talking to, you know? Like, some people might, uh, it's kind of the pure definition of someone's trash is another person's treasure, right? You know, someone who doesn't like something very much, well, maybe they just don't appreciate it, they don't see the beauty in it. So, it's wasted on them. Therefore, they see it as bad art, but someone else can see it as amazing. No, a big example is this abstract painting. You'll uh, someone can make the argument that an abstract painting, you know, 
it's just, you know, a series of lines and, and, and shapes. You know, I could do that, right? You know, everyone's, everyone says that, it's like, oh man, this, this thing is up here for, you know, two million dollars, and it's just a circle in a blank canvas. I could make that. And, you know, yeah, we very well can. But to someone who's uh, an artist, or, or to someone who's like an art collector, someone who sees that message and really resonates with it, you know, they, they understand the artist's backstory, where they came from, their experiences, all of a sudden that, that piece of canvas just becomes different, right? When you start understanding where that artist is coming from, uh, why they decided to make what they made, um, it, it, it's almost like uh, a resume you have to look at the resume first and then you in order to understand the painting um because then you you read that person's story and you understand like wow i can really see uh why they decided to put that that red little dot in that in that big canvas right it's just such a curious curious thing the the whole assessment of art you know um and my question also is well without that biography backing it up, does that diminish the work of the art piece? I think my answer would say, I would say no. Um, but for some people, I think, yeah, it would diminish the art piece because they don't really understand where it's coming from, then why should they care? And maybe that's, that's the whole, that's the whole, uh, thing behind it is, why should I care? Why should I care about this piece of art here? And I mean, that kind of goes a little bit more into, you know, other people and what they want to see, but um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's just a tough, it's a tough thing to explore. Whenever I make art, I try to make it so that it resonates with me. Because I know if it resonates with me, it's going to at least resonate with other people. Those people that are wondering, what's in it for me? Why should I care about this piece? They're the ones that, you know, because my emotion is put into it, hopefully it'll catch on and, and uh, resonate with them, right? That's really the, <laughs> I guess that's how I look at it is if you have your heart and soul into something, it's going to cap, it's going to be captured and it's relevant. Other people will find it and they will, they will see it and they will recognize that they'll recognize that, right? Oh man. Yeah. I'm really thinking this is adorable. I love, I love how this painting came out and now I'm just going to go back over here and just fix up couple of the lines here. Yeah, this is a great scene and it's just a nice little thing you can do. Um, pretty easy actually. And you know, you can make this for, for your mom or for like a family member that really likes, you know, the more kind of simplistic looking Christmas paintings. They're like galaxy skies. I still have trouble saying that. Galaxy sky. <laughs> You know, it, this is just a great, a great way to create a personalized gift if you're thinking about giving a gift like this to somebody. And of course, I'm just gonna go over this area again. Let's give it a nice... Give it a nice little once over with the white. You'll notice that the more white you add, the wh the whiter it becomes. <laughs> I mean that that sounds like a that sounds like a riddle, right? The more white you add, the more white it becomes. It's like yeah, duh. But <laughs> again, you're working with acrylics, so layers, layers, layers are are a big deal here. Okay. So I'm just using that to my advantage here. And again, white is going to really, or excuse me, water, it's really going to help you carry out that color. Ooh, you know what else I'm in the mood for as well? I'm in the mood for some, like, gingerbread. Well, maybe I'll make that today. <sighs> maybe, yeah, maybe I'll make some gingerbread today. Oh, I freaking love gingerbread cookies. Um, if there's anything in the world that, you know, if I were on death row and I had to choose the last type of, you know, cookie to eat... It would definitely be a gingerbread man. I freaking love gingerbread. I don't know, call it the spice, call it whatever, um, but I go absolutely nuts for it. If I see a gingerbread house, I have to annihilate it and eat it because they're just so delicious. And 
it's gonna sound so gross, but I'm that person that absolutely loves to eat like, you know, a five day old gingerbread house. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie and I'm not going to try to make myself seem like I'm, you know, a perfectly, perfectly normal person, because I'm not. I will eat a goddamn gingerbread house that's been there for about a week, standing there with all that frosting on it. That's like the best part to me. <laughs> and I'm probably gonna die, like, at the age of 40. You know what? Who cares? It's delicious. <laughs> and lastly, I'm just gonna add a couple more snowflakes, because, well, I feel like you can never go wrong with more snowflakes, right? So again, just take a lot of water. And flick. Maybe a little bit more water, don't you think? There we go. Awesome. And maybe just a couple of other snowflakes here and there. And that's how you can make your very own reindeer galaxy sky winter scene. Hope you guys had fun. My queen bees, how much fun was this painting? I had such a good time making this and it really does have that nice little magical quality to it. If you guys are interested in buying the print for this, I will include a link to my store in the description below. If you've been living under a rock for the past couple of weeks, I officially have my own website, www.thebuzzartist.com. Com. I will be displaying blog posts, videos, as well as my own art prints for sale. So you can see this print on my store in the description below. Just check out that link. You're going to have a good time. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, please be sure to give this video a like and to subscribe to my channel. Hit that like button. You know what to do so that you can see more fun, interesting paintings from me to you in the future. And I'd like to wish you a happy holiday and a Merry Christmas. Remember to love yourselves and always have fun with your acrylic paint. See you all next time. Bye.